Welcome to labmiz.com in our lab video series on Cisco ICE 2.2. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of our ICE videos, you can visit our website. And this is going to be under the security section. And you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In the next two videos, we are going to be looking at the most fundamental and probably the most used functions of ICE, which is 802.1x. 802.1x is the key to enable identity-based network access. Any endpoint that connects to the network will need to be authenticated one way or the other to gain network access. The difference between .1x and MAP that we looked at in the last video is that with .1x, the endpoint needs to run .1x supplicant and be able to prove its identity as opposed to MAP where endpoint doesn't even need to know what's going on with the authentication. Once authenticated, ICE will know exactly who, when, and where the users are connected to the network. .1x is also a prerequisite to many other ICE functionalities like posture assessments or trust so it is very essential that you understand .1x. Starting in this video, we will look at wired.1x on Cisco switches. We will configure and test two commonly used authentication protocols, which are PEEP and EEPTLS. For our lab topology, we have a two-node ICE deployment running version ICE 2.2, and the IP of the two servers are 172.16.32.102 and .103, and there are ICE 1 and ICE 2. And they're sitting on our server VLAN, VLAN 32. On that VLAN, we also have a Windows 2012 domain controller and certificate authority server at the IP of .40. Then we have a user VLAN, VLAN 64 with the subnet 172.16.64.0 slash 24. The test machine that we are going to be using in this lab is our Windows 10 VM, and that is a domain computer. We will be performing two types of authentication. There will be what it's called a user authentication. And the user we're going to be using is our AD user employee one that's part of our AD group domain users. And then there's a separate authentication, which actually happens before the user authentication. It's called a computer or machine authentication. Since the domain join computer, it would use its credential, which is the host name, lm-win10-test1 to authenticate. At the same time, as the computer join our domain, we have already issued a computer certificate. Actually, the user also have a certificate. And the CN of that computer certificate is just a computer name. Once the computer is successfully authenticated, it will receive a downloadable ACL called Wired Computer. And for the user, once the user authenticates, it will receive a different downloadable ACL called Wired User. And the two protocols that we will be testing with is EPTLS and P. We are going to configure ICE such that the user is required to log in from a domain computer. Right? And the feature that enables the functionality is called Machine Access Restriction or MAR. And this is the same concept as what has existed back in ACS5, All right, so which means that any non-domain computer, which we also have another VM here, LM Win 10 Test 2, would not be able to access the network, even though the user may have a valid AD credential. But as long as the computer the user is accessing it from is not a domain computer, we will be failing the authentication. And both of these test VMs are connected off our switch port gig 1019, and the port has already been configured with 802.1x. And all of these authentication is going to be done through our Windows 10 native supplicant. The prerequisite for this lab is that both of the computer and the user should have obtained a where there's computer client a user certificate from your certificate authority server, and hopefully that was accomplished when the computer was first joined to the domain or the first user lock-in, or right? you can configure the GPO on your domain controller to be able to push that certificate or issue the certificate from your certificate authority server. The way that we will be configuring the .1x on ICE is to follow the network access flow under the work center. Very similar to the profiler flow that we did in the previous video. So let me bring up the web interface to ICE under the work center right here. We have already looked at the profiling and probes. Now we are going to jump over to the network access section. Start with the overview. Here it gives you an overview of some of the things that you would need to configure. Things like identity stores where the user's credentials are stored, whether it's uh, internal or external. Policy elements that use with conditions results, or as part of 
authentication authorization policies, adding network devices if you haven't done already. And then you go through the definition of policies, both authentication and authorization, and then some of the settings you can adjust. And finally, once you have gone live with your setup, then you have ability to view the live log, the radius, generate some reports, and perform troubleshooting. Right. Underneath, there's a quick link to radius live log, which is the same link as the one located under the operation.